hey everyone welcome back to the channel i hope you are doing great in this video i'm going to teach you search engine optimization in wix studio you're going to learn about on page seo off page seo technical seo some very cool features that wix has which you can use uh, for example schema markups um, i'm going to teach you about the internal links and many other uh, things that you can use to rank your website on google so yeah it's going to be a really cool tutorial and uh, by the end of the tutorial you will be able to rank your website without any effort so without further delay let's get started the first thing you need to do in order to optimize your website is the keyword research the reason why we are doing that is to find the keywords with high search volume and low competition now why we should do that well the reason is that uh, search engines don't favor new websites they favor the websites with more content and more backlinks more domain authority so we're gonna need the keywords which uh, has high search volume and low competition so that we can use those keywords to rank our website for multiple keywords so for that we're gonna use the SEMrush now there are a lot of tools out there Moz, we have over suggest we have keyword optimizer and many other things however my personal favorite is the SEMrush SEMrush has the most accurate data for keyword research and it has a really good uh, tool for site audit as well. Um, it costs around $130 per month. However, the tools that you get um, are so amazing that you can regain that value within one to two months. So yeah, this is the best option. I will drop a link in the description and uh, just to let you know that's an affiliate link. So you can either use the affiliate link or you can simply go to SEMrush.com. Either one is cool okay back to uh, keyword research now Google shows different results in different demographics okay so you will get a totally different result for a certain keyword in United States compared to United Kingdom compared to Australia or anywhere else so you have to make sure that you are doing the keyword research in the right demographic so let's say your business is in United States in that case you have to change the country here to United States because the keyword will have different uh, results in India and US so you have to make sure that you change the country to the one that has your uh, main audience um, after that you have to type in your main keywords so for example let's say you are selling some uh, clothing uh, brand online in that case let's uh, search for t-shirt All right, and now SEMrush will give you some results here. So let's understand the data first. We have the main keywords. After that, the intent of the keywords, which means uh, whether it's a commercial keyword or informational or transactional or navigational. So what is the intent of the people while searching for these keywords? That's the intent. All right, so if you have a blog, you will need informational. If you have a brand, you will need the transactional and commercial. And if you are just selling something, you will need the commercial after that we have the search volume which is the monthly search volume and then the keyword difficulty now our interest is in the keyword difficulty what we're going to do as a brand new website is that we will filter the keywords with the difficulty very easy and it will give us some uh, keywords here with the least difficulty and uh, we can sort it out with the highest volume now we have a bunch of keywords here which are good to be used in our website okay so these uh, keywords for example has a very low uh, difficulty when we use them in our website okay which means that it is easier to be found when we use these keywords compared to just plain uh, t-shirt or any other main keyword so you have to filter out these uh, keywords based on the difficulty the search volume and the intent now we can use these keywords and match them according to our brand. So uh, for example, a uh, crop t-shirt, if you have a female uh, clothing brand, you can use this one. Um, if you have some print on demand, you can use this one. Or if you are just uh, selling some other you know, particular colors, you can use these ones. So these keywords will help you attract at least these uh, people to your website. So instead of using the keywords with high volume and high difficulty, it is much better to use the keywords with the highest volume and the lowest difficulty. So do some research on SEMrush and find out the most um, you know, amazing keywords for your website. And then you can go here and put them in your title, your content, your paragraph, 
and everywhere. Okay, now let's talk about the heading structure. Once you get the keywords, create a collection, maybe an Excel sheet, and based on that, you can create the heading structure of uh, what people are searching for and what has the lowest keyword difficulty, all right? So let's talk about the heading structure now. For every page, there should be only one H1 heading. So every heading has an attribution tag, and you can find that in Wix Studio right here, HTML tag, all right? So we have H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, paragraph, and block code. Um, every page should have one heading of H1 tag. All right, so the main heading that you have, in that case, let's say a uh, funny t-shirt for women, if you are selling that, and this is the page uh, dedicated to this keyword, your main heading, the edge one heading should be this. So I have assigned this heading an edge one tag. You shouldn't assign any of other tags for your main heading, only the edge one. All right, so edge one should be one and one only. After that, your secondary categories, like this one, will have an H2 tag. So if you go here, you will have an H2. And that is why we have different heading structure. We have all these themes. These are basically assigned the tag. But you have to make sure that when you are using text, you have to make sure that you check the HTML tag as well. So we have the H2. After that, if I want to add any heading to these, these will be H3. So you have to create a structure of the heading. So that search engine knows which content is related to which. So this uh, top category will be H2 and these will be H3. So search engine knows that these categories are related to this heading. All right. So this will be H2 and these will be H3. Now, if these uh, heading have some further uh, subcategories, like if programming has a uh, full stake development or C++ or something like that, in that case, you will have H4 heading h5 heading and so on normally we don't go beyond h5 but it depends on the complexity of the web page you can assign h2 or h3 here as well uh, in popular courses you can assign this h2 and then these will be h3 okay the main headings in testimonial similarly go uh, with the h2 for this heading or h3 and then you can give these names, these uh, names right here, H4. So it depends on the importance of the uh, content, the heading. Uh, similarly, the instructors is an important part of the uh, online course. So I will assign an H2 here and then H3 to these names. All right. So just go here and in here, you can assign them H3. Okay. So Depending on the structure of your web page, you can assign the heading. And it is really important for uh, search engines to understand the content of your page. If you add, for example, let's say if you give this an H1 as well. So in that case, you will have two main headings and Google will uh, confuse which is which. All right. Although it is a smart, but in some case, um, if they take this as the main heading, it will disrupt the entire SEO. So make sure that every page should have only one H1 heading. You can have up to three, two to three H2 headings, and then you can have multiple H3 headings. All right, so that's the heading structure. Now let's talk about the performance optimization. What is it and why is it important? So let me first show you how to check the performance of your uh, Wix website. So simply copy the link of the web page go to this website called Page Speed Insights. Paste your domain here and let it analyze. Okay, now let's talk about the performance while it's doing its work. So one of the most important factor in the Google search ranking is the loading time of your web page, its accessibility, its SEO, and other factors. So it's really important that your website loads faster. All right, if it's taking time to load, it's going to affect your SEO as well because Google uses uh, performance as one of the primary uh, ranking factors. So as you can see here, I have a performance of 65 on mobile devices and 95 on desktop. So if someone is searching for uh, the content 
related to this page they will get a better ranking on the desktop compared to mobile because if there is some other website with a better performance it will have a better SEO score as well so you have to make sure that your website loads faster on both mobile and desktop now how do we do that let me give you a few uh, tips that you can use first of all keep the top elements of your website like these uh, text these images very light all right don't use like heavy videos or widgets or something like that because they will slow down the website so the top element should be very light um, like if i just go here and reload the website you can see that it loads instantly on the desktop that's because i have used very light element here like these images everything is very like 10 kilobytes or something like that so it loads really fast the second thing you should do is don't use uh, widgets on the uh, page like Wix has a lot of widgets if you go to store you will find widgets and uh, let me add it real quick so don't use widgets on the Wix studio because widgets use a lot of JavaScript and that you know slows down the website just add one widget and it will you know bring down this entire score by many folds so I will recommend using things like repeaters and then designing a product uh, section from uh, scratch instead of using a widget okay so these widgets right here don't add them in your section because these will slow down the web page the performance um, another thing you should understand here is that Google assign a crawl budget to each website okay it's not free Google the, Google have to spend some money in order to you know crawl your website and the budget is uh, you know definite so these JavaScripts used in these uh, you know product widgets and everything they take up the crawl budget and that is why it takes time for Google as well to you know uh, evaluate the script of the JavaScripts so it takes time for indexing as well if you have like a lot of pages uh, you will see that the indexability has decreased a lot it will take a lot of time for Google to index your page okay so that is why I recommend not using a lot of JavaScript on the web pages um, another thing I have seen people do is that they use videos as a background so don't do that as well if you want to do that make sure to do them in the uh, section in the lower side um, the animations as well just because we have a lot of animation don't use them on every element keep the animations in moderation keep the things uh, look good but you know don't overdo them for example I have used CSS to make this button look like this right so yeah you can use these kind of things to make sure that website looks cool but it doesn't have a lot of JavaScript and animations one more thing you can do to increase your uh, speed of the blog on mobile is to engage the uh, accelerated mobile page let me show you where to do that all right so you have to go to the back end of the website and go to SEO and website here in the site and mobile app go to the SEO and here you will find the SEO settings go to the blog posts and here we have the accelerated mobile page now just turn on enable AMP on your blog post okay and it will uh, you know speed up your post pages for mobile devices which is really good for uh, you know search engine ranking so yes this is another thing you can do to increase the speed of your uh, blog posts now let's talk about the images uh, another important uh, asset in the website so how do we create the SEO for the images the first thing you need to do is change the size of the image and minimize that the way to do this is to go to cloudconvert.com or any other image converter I like this one so you have to convert all the images that you have into WEBP format so go here image and WEBP this is the standard uh, extension of the images for websites um, it is low in size and has better performance it increases the performance of the website this is one of the reason why I have 95 on the desktop so as you can see it is just 66.2 kilobytes 
if you look at the original image um, the size is 448 so it's a you know large difference and it makes a lot of difference in the performance because we use a lot of images in the websites so make sure you uh, compress all your images um, convert their uh, extension from anything to webp now how do we add the alternative text to the image just select the image go to settings and write what this image or vector art is about for example i can write an image of an student holding a book most people believe that the reason why we use all text is to tell google as you can see here it is written that uh, it is for seo and accessibility but i think the most important goal of this is for accessibility uh, in fact because uh, many people use screen readers like people with uh, you know eye disabilities or people who are blind they use screen readers and this image alternative text is what screen readers read to them so it's important that you use a long description of the image instead of just uh, you know copying something and just pasting it so tell people what this image actually is about because google can understand images all right so make sure you use proper alternative text okay now let's talk about the internal links internal links are one of the important factors in seo as well um, they help users navigate the site better and this is something i love about uh, wix they have added a cool feature in their blog to create internal links so all you have to do is go to the post and when you are editing it add hashtags to your main keywords now let's say wix studio is one of my primary keyword now what i will do is i will just add a hashtag in one of the wix studio keyword and it will create an internal link in form of tags so find this keyword for example and put an hashtag and it will create an internal link in the blog or you can also do that with this like this right so you can create internal links by putting hashtags and on other pages like product page you can uh, put the links in the same way just select the text and put the link to some uh, related blog or other products so that people can easily navigate to other related products and blog posts so that was for image now let's talk about the SEO basics okay now we are talking about the meta tags up to this point we were just optimizing the content so just uh, as I said when we did the keyword research you have to put the uh, title in the same way put the title that not only makes sense but also uh, use the keywords so for example let's use um, cropped t-shirt so simply go here and put the title like this if you have any discounts put them as well like this so you have to make sure that the title makes sense and it attracts the people okay just because the link is showing in, on the google doesn't mean people will click on it so you have to attract the people as well so this uh title here looks good buy crop t-shirts online up to 30 percent off and then store name all right the same goes for the uh, meta description as well just put the uh, description that makes sense and uses the main keyword your title should be around 70 characters and the description should be around 150 characters that's a good spot so yeah that's it for this video i hope you learned something thanks for watching